once you see that light, it'll be ready to go. And YouTube is almost ready. There it goes. Once you see that light, it'll. Here we go. All right, so we're live on YouTube and now we're gonna start our ready. webinar. There it goes. Once you see that light, it'll. Here we go. All right, so we're live on YouTube and now we're gonna start our. We're getting started. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Tech Talks. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to say thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we have a very special presentation for uh, everyone. Today, we have uh, the special ed uh, department joining us with our uh, Tech Talks uh, today for the power of play, instructional activities for your child. Uh, Veronica, did you want to share your screen? Sure, um, thank you for having us. My name is Veronica Mullen. I am the TK-12 specialist uh, and we have our team here, Diane and Patricia. Um, so we will begin and we'll officially introduce ourselves. So for today's Tech Talks, we have the power of play, uh, the parent presentation, uh, instructional activities to, to support your child with play. Uh, thank you very much for joining us at, here at Local District Central for our continuing Tech Talk series every Wednesdays and Fridays of this school year. Uh, next slide, please. We have interpretation services available for you today. Uh, hay eh, servicios de interpretación uh, disponibles para usted. Uh, if you'd like to hear the presentation in Spanish, please click on the globe icon at the bottom of your screen. Select the language of preference for you. Um, you will engage and listen to the presentation in the language you select. If your device does not support interpretation, use the conference call number uh, for this meeting in español. Haga click en el símbolo del mundo en la parte de abajo de su pantalla. Seleccione el idioma que le gustaría escuchar, en este caso español, y participará y escuchará la presentación en el idioma que seleccione. Uh, si su dispositivo no admite interpretación, uh, podrá usar el número de la llamada de conferencia para esta reunión. Gracias. Thank you. Before we begin our webinar presentation, I would like to go over some norms. Um, this is a webinar, so we will have the microphone as well as uh, the video uh, off. I would like to remind everybody uh, that we are gonna be respecting uh, everyone's time uh, today and to please be present. Our presentation is interactive, so we're gonna ask everybody uh, to be present and respond when called upon. You'll be able to respond in the chat as well as in, in the Q&A throughout the presentation. Uh, so with that, we are going to begin. Welcome parents and community members. We're excited to have you participate in today's presentation, The Power of Play. My name is Patricia Ordonez and I'll be one of your presenters along with my colleague, Diane Angel. 
we're special education support providers for local districts Central and West, providing support to all TK-12 schools. Again, also here to support with the presentation is Veronica Mullen, who briefly um, introduced herself. She's our specialist TK-12, um, she's our specialist for TK-12 instruction uh, for the Division of Special Ed. So thank you once again for being here today. To begin, here are today's learning invitations. The first invitation is play. We'll discover what it is and what the benefits of play are. The second invitation is activities, specifically educational activities for play. Our third invitation is online resources. And finally, our fourth invitation will be reserved for questions and an opportunity for PI, which stands for Parents Idea Exchange. With that, we will begin. In this first invitation, we'll begin with an activity, then explore what is play and why is play important. Before we jump into the content of our presentation, we'd like to take a moment to connect with you with this following inclusion activity. The following poll will allow us to hear from you and about you, our audience. While the greatest advantage of online resources may be that we can still access education through virtual classrooms, we're all learning to establish healthy limits on screen time. Let's take a moment to acknowledge the opportunities available to us during this time at home with our children. What are you doing at home to disconnect from the screens? What activities have you been doing with your child? Away from the TV, the computer, the iPad, the cell phone, etc. We will begin the poll. Okay, I see some responses coming in. I see a lot of us are walking these days. I'll give you a few more seconds to participate. We have 38% participation. Okay, thank you for participating in the chat as well. I see walking, exercising, playing, reading, We can end the poll now. Very nice. I've incorporated a, a, a walk every morning as well. Okay. So as you see, this is a good reminder that when it comes to play, the possibilities are endless, right? Thank you for participating in our poll. Now, we would like to share the following quote with you. This quote is from Jerome Singer, a research psychologist who wrote extensively about children's play and the effects of television. The activities that are the easiest, cheapest, and most fun to do, such as singing, playing games, reading, storytelling, and just talking and listening are also the best 
for child development. According to researchers Smith and Pellegrini, play is defined as an activity done for its own sake, characterized by means rather than ends, where the process is more important than any end point or goal. Play requires flexibility where objects are put in new combinations or roles are acted out in new ways. And there's positive affect where children often smile, laugh, and say they enjoy it. As you can see, there are many reasons to play. It's important to foster the love of play because of the many benefits. There are social and academic advantages gained from play. For example, play encourages social interaction and sharing. It creates friendships. It improves vocabulary, language development, and storytelling skills. Play also develops positive emotional well-being, relieves emotional tension, and helps conquer fears. Play develops skills such as critical thinking, communication, problem solving, and collaboration, as well as encourages creativity and imagination. As we weather this pandemic, it's especially important for our children to engage in play as it can help to improve one's ability to experience and appropriately express emotions, understand the emotions of others, and regulate emotions. In this next invitation, we will present activities designed to maximize the educational benefits of play. We will share with you a bit.ly folder at the end of the presentation where you will find all the video links, activities, websites, and handouts that we will be presenting today. So before we start playing, we have to make sure that our children understand what to do and use all of their capabilities and skills to play. Let's think about all of our children in these activities. Let's consider our children's physical, and cognitive abilities to participate in play activities. First, give the children time to explore the materials for the upcoming play activity. This provides a comfortable and safe space for our children before they begin to play. For example, if they will play jump rope, then have them touch and explore the jump rope itself. If they're going to do some coloring in a book, let them flip through the coloring book pages and look at the crayons that they're gonna use. If they get to know the materials in advance, they will be more motivated to participate in the play activity. Next, make sure students have accessibility to the activity. What structures, materials, and supports do you need to have in place for them to participate? Consider how to support fine and gross motor skills developmental levels. Make sure accommodations are in place. Then model the activity with clear expectations using three modeling ways, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic practice. You can tell your child. Now you will look, listen, and practice. For example, if you're gonna be doing a coloring book activity, have your child look at you model first. Have your child sit in a chair, open up the coloring book, choose a page, carefully take out the crayons, pick one and color. Model what kind of words and conversations you can have while you color. Also, don't forget to model cleaning up procedures. Then, repeat the coloring book activity steps one more time and have them listen, perhaps even echo what you say. You may also have a visual board with the steps to follow along as you say the steps aloud. Lastly, have them practice the activity and praise them every time you catch them following the steps correctly. 
just have fun. To start us off, here's a quote from Van Mardell, a researcher at Harvard's Graduate School of Education. He's also the project director of the Pedagogy of Play, a collaboration with the Lego Foundation and the International School of Billund in Denmark. My take is that any activity can be play or not play. The secret sauce is playfulness, the ability to see a situation and be curious about it, realize it can be enjoyable and take agency over it. It's like a spoonful of sugar in Mary Poppins. Even cleaning up can be fun if you have the right mindset. So how can we apply Dr. Martell's research to foster curiosity and inspire creativity with our children at home? One way is through improvisational games. Improvisational games allow us to create a positive atmosphere by cultivating playful energy. Improvisational games allow us to forge friendships and respectful bonds through play. Okay, here's one example of an improvisational game called Last Word, First Word. In this game, the challenge is to listen to a person's entire sentence before responding. You can use a visual, like a card, or your hand, or a puppet to support students' listening skills. When you say the last word in the sentence, raise that visual to kinesthetically recall the last word in order for the child to be ready to use it as the first word in his or her sentence. This will lower the anxiety and make the activity most enjoyable. To demonstrate how this game works, I'm gonna invite my colleague, Diane, along with her finger puppet, Miss Piggy, to join me. Hello, Patty. Hi, Diane. Would you like to play a game called Last Word, First Word? Of course, that would be wonderful. All right. How do we play? Okay. Well, we play by taking turns talking about a subject. The first player talks and the second player listens closely and pays attention to the last word the first player says. Then the second player must use the last word first in their new sentence and so on. Do you wanna choose a subject, Diane? Sure, let's talk about our favorite food. Mmm, I love food, okay. Let's go. I'll start. One of my first favorite, one of my favorite foods is pasta with lots of cheese. Cheese is cheese. Cheese pizza is what I love to eat for dinner. Dinner sounds like something you and I can make together. And so on. Thank you, Diane, for Jill joining me. As you can see, the purpose of this activity is to learn the importance of listening for effective communication. Improvisational games allow us to learn how to take small risks and experience a little failure in a safe environment, which helps to establish bonds through sharing a laugh. How often do we listen to others? Just long enough to get an idea of what they're saying and then we start preparing our response before they even begin, even before they're done speaking. When we do this, it's called listening to respond as opposed to listening to understand. As most will agree, it's important for us to know how to listen to understand for effective communication. Okay, next. Let's take a moment to hear from all of you in the audience. Please type answers to the following questions into the chat. Here they are. Why would this activity be challenging for someone? 
What could you and your child learn through this activity? And finally, can you imagine doing this activity with your child at home? Please take a moment and type your answers into the chat. Okay, we might learn how to follow directions. Very good. It might be a little challenging at first and with practice, right? It'll become more fun and easier. We can use the token board. Can also change it up with different questions. Sure, we picked a uh, uh, food, but you can select the different topics. I see here, I can have more um, trust with my children, and that is correct. Building relationships, right? That communication. Listening skills. Yeah, we wanna make sure we give our children a, a voice. We wanna let them speak, we wanna listen, we wanna model. Wonderful, thank you all for sharing in the chat. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Diane, who's gonna walk us through the rest of our learning. Hello, thank you, Patty. Next, we'll explore activities with playing cards. Here is a video that helps explain the educational benefits of playing cards. As you watch the video, we invite you to consider how can you use cards for educational activities for play at home? it may be time to dust off that pack of playing cards in your utility drawer. Social scientists say the decline of the family card game means some significant benefits are being lost. Here with the story is WSJ's work family columnist, Sue Schellenbarger. Sue, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Tanya. So, so what are some of the benefits children get out of these family card games? Well, of course, basic math from comparing and counting cards, memory skills, taking turns, following rules. Kids build confidence if they can beat mom and dad on the same level playing field with the same rules. And of course, winning and losing gracefully is a big one. Yeah, that's really something my eight-year-old could work on so we can play a lot more card games. But if you would, give us some examples of card games that work well for families with a range of ages. We are stuck in an Uno rut. And while I do love the game, I think it's time to to branch out. <laughs> I took a look at uh, games that you can play with a traditional deck and of course there's Old Maid and War for the little kids. Several families I spoke with brought their kids into card playing with those games. Uh, moving on up there's Rummy and trick taking games like Euchre and of course Poker, Texas Hold'em for older kids playing usually with candy and not cash. Very popular and they start that gambling soon. Now so can the rules for these games be found online these days because they all sound familiar but we could all probably Probably use some brushing up. <laughs> it's true. U.S. Playing Cards, the company that makes almost all the major brands, Bicycle Cam, uh, posts the the, uh, the rules for games on the Bicycle.com site. A site called Grandparents.com is it has really good summaries. I found of the rules, so it's pretty easy to figure out how to play by looking online. Okay, that's very good to know. Now, Sue, what do experts say about letting your kids win occasionally or not playing your hardest when they're younger? Is that a no-no or is that okay? Well, I think when you're bringing kids into card play, it's not a bad thing to encourage them a bit by making sure that they have an occasional win. But as kids get older, one of the benefits of playing cards is for them to learn to take their shots. 
and to lose at the table on an equal footing with the, their elders. And teens I spoke with who were still playing with their families said they really appreciated that so that when they actually beat grandpa or mom or dad, they really were proud. And it taught them social skills, they said, to take to school, to take that teasing a little more uh, resiliently and uh, to learn to, to tease other people too in a graceful way. Absolutely. We did a lot of card playing on a recent ski trip and I'm a convert, Sue. So thank you for the story. <laughs> thank you, Tanya. As you saw in the video, there are many educational benefits to be gained from playing cards. Here is a handout with a few sorting activities for children of various ages and abilities. Card sorting games help with logical reasoning and number sense. In this handout, we have a card sorting game called Aces, Faces, Odds, and Evens. As you can see, you can sort by color, by pairs or by suit. You can use a timer and see how many cards you can correctly sort in one minute. It is educational and it can be fun for the whole family. You can find this handout in the bit.ly folder that we will share at the end of the presentation. Some benefits for sorting activities include increasing number sense. Many games include addition and subtraction learning organizational skills such as categorizing, sequencing, and sorting, developing fine motor skills and dexterity while holding and shuffling the cards, practicing turn-taking, communication, problem-solving, and teamwork, improving memory skills, fostering quick thinking and decision-making skills, and encouraging strategic thinking. Another great example of a card game that involves two players is speed. Once you and your secondary student get familiar with it, you can YouTube variations of this game and challenge yourself again. The possibilities are endless. Here is a video on how to play speed. Speed is a fast, fun card game that is played with two players. The goal of the game is to get rid of all of your cards before your opponent. To play, first place two piles of five cards, each in the center of the playing arena, with two piles of one card each in between them. Then, deal 20 cards each to you and your opponent. Pick up the top five cards in your pile. When you're ready, you and your opponent should count to three, then each flip one of the single cards in the middle. Now, race against your opponent by playing the cards in your hand on the face-up cards in the middle as fast as you can. In order to play a card on another card, the card you're playing must be one number higher or one number lower. The suit of the card doesn't matter. Once you play a card in the middle, Draw a new card from your pile. Make sure you don't have more than five cards in your hand at one time. If both you and your opponent are unable to play a card, you should each flip over one of the face down cards in the middle at the same time. Then continue racing against each other. Once you've played all of the cards in your hand and pile before your opponent, shout speed to win the game. That seems like a really fun game. Let's talk about coloring books. Think about how much you enjoyed coloring as a child. Whichever type of coloring book you choose to provide for your child or children, they all have benefits. You can buy a themed book with your child's interest in mind. It can be character based, such as unicorns and superheroes. You can also have an alphabet book, math book with numbers, addition, and or subtraction. So now let's talk another option, excuse me, another option is printing the coloring pages off the internet based on your child's request. So now let us talk about the benefit of coloring books. First, it improves motor skills. 
The actions, motions, and precise grip involved in coloring can aid in the development of the muscles of the fingers, hands, and wrists. Coloring also stimulates creativity. Whether they stay in the lines or not, coloring fosters a creative spirit and an appreciation for visual differences. It improves focus and hand-eye coordination. Coordination and the ability to focus is just developing in young children and undertaking activities to foster and strengthen this budding talent assists in efficient, healthy development. The act of holding a crayon Choosing colors, implementing the color in the ideal spot, and even sharpening crayons can all help with cultivating strong hand-eye coordination in youngsters. Better handwriting, hand strength, and attention to detail are all required to write both printed letters and cursive script. Starting out with coloring pages early can help to develop these qualities so that writing comes more easily and naturally. Then there's language development. Coloring and discussing their creation gives children an opportunity to learn new words and sentences. Children use descriptive words to talk about their feelings when they see different styles of coloring sheets. Once they learn how to decide on which colors to use, they can then plan their coloring activities in a more coordinated manner. They will learn to pick colors, to use their colors, and they will know the correct order in which to apply the colors in a picture. But hey, who says that coloring is just for the little ones? There are options for our older students and for ourselves. For the child with an anime obsession, there are manga coloring books. If your child is more on the thoughtful side, there is a conversation coloring book. For the child that wants to just freehand it, there is doodling and coloring books available or just a blank notebook for them to doodle. There are so many coloring books out there for older children and adults that can keep you and your child entertained for a long time. Moving from coloring, we have a video to model story cubes. And I happen to have a story cube here, it's like this. Here is an example of using story cubes for elementary children. Many of the historical figures we meet on Xavier Riddle and the Secret Museum were storytellers themselves. Spark your child's imagination by making and playing with this storytelling game. Go to pbskidsforparents.org and print out the three story cube printables. You're going to be making story cubes for characters, settings, and objects. Have your child draw themselves on the blank character cube so they can put themselves in their story. Fold the cube along the solid lines. Carefully form a cube by taping the pieces together. Now it's time to play. Roll each of the three dice so you end up with a character. Yay, it's Athena! Setting. Science lab! An object. <gasps> Butterflies! Now you know what your story is going to be about. Combine what you rolled into your own creative story. One day, Yadina went to the science lab, and then she saw all the beautiful butterflies. She thought she just wanted this look at one up close, so she opened up the cage. She let out all the butterflies. She tried to clean that up, but she couldn't. The science lab was a mess. The end. What will your story be? Find more ways to play at pbskidsforparents.org. Wasn't that a great story made with the story cubes? Looks like so many different things you can do with these. One sec, I'm trying to get the presentation back up. Riddle and the Secret Museum were storytellers themselves. There you go. Thank you, Veronica. In this slide, we show you how to adapt story cues for older students. Using a blank template, your child can choose to write or draw on the sides and create their own stories. 
For example, on one side of the box, the child can draw or write the characters. So on one side, they can draw or write. On another side, they can draw or write the setting. And on another side, they can draw and write the plot. The last example is of how a child created a comic story using actual cubes. Each square advances the plot. I will explain in the next slide what the actual cubes are called. Whether you choose to purchase the cubes or have your child create it, the ideas are endless. Rory's Story Cubes is a pocket-sized creative story generator, providing hours of imaginative play for all ages. With Rory's Story Cubes, anyone can become a great storyteller, and there are no wrong answers. Each side of Rory Cube has an image. Simply roll the cubes and let the pictures spark your imagination. We now move to our third invitation, which is online resources. Here are some sites we have found for you to explore some options for play with your children. For example, there are many activities on the PBS site that you can use for younger students. Pinterest is another amazing site to find games and activities for both the young and older kids, as well as adults. Please explore these resources, such as Time Magazine for Kids and National Geographic for Kids. All the resources we shared in this presentation can be found in a Google Bitly dedicated to helping and encouraging play for your child. This link will be dropped into the chat. This is our final invitation. We reserve this section for questions and pie, the parent idea exchange. Based on what we've shared with you, do you have any great ways that you use play with your child? Please share in the chat box and we will share those responses. Monopoly. Um, when grocery shopping. Yes, that's really all. Oh, that's always fun. Oh, the game operation where you and checkers. These are all wonderful suggestions and ideas. Now I'll hand it over to Alex, who is going to share some important information. Thank you. Thank you very much, Diane. Uh, it definitely reminds me of all the games and activities that I, I've been playing this past year with uh, my children. Um, we actually just played a game over dinner uh, the other day uh, called Headband. So it, playing games uh, develops uh, my children's language, definitely uh, helps them out. So this was a wonderful presentation and brought back a lot of fun and exciting memories that I have with my own family. So thank you very much uh, team for that. So now I'd like to go on and uh, let everyone know about our upcoming opportunities in local district central thank you uh parents for joining us today at our tech talks where we had the special ed team present the power of play instruction activities to, to support your child at home uh, i would also ask for you to feel free to join us on friday this friday where we have 
uh, a partnership with the Mex Mexican con consulate. Uh, please join us uh, to hear all the wonderful information that they will be sharing that uh, with, about the partnership that LAUSD has with the Mexican consulate. And again, that is Friday at three o'clock. Um, same Zoom link. We will see you uh, at that time. Next slide, please. Hello, parents. Uh, this is a reminder. Uh, I would like to invite you, if you haven't heard about our Title I Spring Conference coming this June 5th, I would like to invite uh, the parents to uh, uh, join us. Uh, please speak to your school about information regarding the conference. Your school um, has been given flyers, so you can definitely talk to them about coming and join us Saturday, June 5th at 8 a.m. I'm sorry, at 8.30 a.m. Uh, to uh, 11.30. We have a lot of exciting uh, and very informative workshops that we would like to share with our LDC families. Also, we have um, the We Stand Together, the Asian American Voices workshops. We have one more left, which is this Tuesday, June 1st at five o'clock. It is a uh, town hall. This has been a very powerful series that Local District Central has been putting out the month of May. And we're gonna finish off this Tuesday, June 1st with the Chinese American uh, continuity experience. So please join LD Central on Tuesday, June 1st at 5 p.m. Families, this is our helpline number. This is the district's helpline number, 213-443-1300. If you have the opportunity to take a screenshot, this will be a good time to do it, or you can write it down. This is the number that we are providing uh, to parents to reach out if they have questions or are concerns about uh, parent portal, or about the daily pass, or uh, about concerns regarding uh, their child's mental health, uh, concerns re regarding how to get on access to Schoology. This helpline can uh, be, uh, is available throughout the week and can help with um, many, many different situations that parents might be uh, having difficulty with. So please uh, know that this number is available and the district is able to help out. Okay, also parents, uh, this is very important. Uh, we have mobile vaccination clinics in LD Central giving students 12 and up the vaccine. And this started on uh, Monday of this week. Uh, the vaccination clinics are open from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. at school sites. You must uh, give your child a consent in order to have a vaccine you can do that by bringing your child to the clinic, um, to the mobile vaccination uh, unit, or you can have your child come with a, a consent form. Please inquire with your child's school about the mobile vaccination unit. Uh, today, the unit was at RFK in Sotomayor. Uh, tomorrow, it'll be at Fauche Learning Center in Marshall uh, Senior High School. So if you're interested in getting your child vaccinated, uh, students that are 12 and up, please uh, reach out to the mobile clinic. It's open from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can make an appointment on the Daily Passes website or you can walk in and your child will receive the vaccination. Uh, lastly, everyone, I would like to share with you the local district central uh, parent educator uh, coach team. These are, are your coaches for all of your community of schools and local district central. Uh, we have uh, Anna, uh, Ms. Anna De Loretta for the uh, downtown Mac uh, MacArthur Park community of schools. We have Miss um, Anna Martinez for the Eagle Rock Highland Park community of schools. We have uh, Miss Saint uh, uh, Miss Cyrene Saint Amant for the Glasshall Park community of schools, and myself. I am the uh, parent educator coach for the Jefferson South Central and the historic Central Avenue community of schools. And we have um, Ms. Elizabeth Lomelli for the Korea Pico Union Community Schools and Ms. Emmanuel, uh, and Ms. Velma Monzon for the Manual Arts Vermont Square Community Schools. 
Our PACE administrator is uh, the wonderful Miss uh, Teresa Aragin. Uh, here is her contact information. And we have our uh, community representatives also, Miss uh, Norma Gutierrez and Miss So No. This is also their contact information. Feel free to reach out to us with any concerns that, that you may have regarding uh, your, your, own uh, your own children. Our email address is on front of the screen. Feel free to take a screenshot and then let us know if you have any additional questions and how we can support you. At this time, I'd like to say thank you uh, very much uh, for all the parents who attended our uh, Tech Talk today. And we're not ending just yet, but I, I am letting everyone know uh, how grateful we are for you, uh, for everyone coming today, signing in and listening to the presentation. Now, um, I see that we might be, we might have some questions in the chat or some comments. And if we do, uh, this will be a time, I guess, that we can go ahead and see if we can answer some uh, more questions. Ladies, is, is that okay? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I want to thank our SPED team also for supporting today's event. A lot of inf great information for our families, um, thinking about how play is interconnected with all uh, wonderful learning opportunities. So we really appreciate you being here with us today. Um, let me see about... Um, we have a lot of comments saying thank you for the information. Yes, yes absolutely. That I, everyone was great. Thank you very much. We have somebody here commenting on Loteria and how they learn Spanish using Loteria. Um, Glad Thank that. you for the fun tips. Gracias, oh. gracias. <laughs> um, we do have someone asking for more information about summer school. Um, we do plan on um, conducting a tech talk and more like this session um, to give you more information. So we are going to be having summer school for our students. There'll be various opportunities based on their um, grade levels in elementary school, middle school and high school. Um, we will also be having summer enrichment like we did last year um, and families will be able to um, sign up. Um, we also have Beyond the Bell support um, for students that will be going to school, attending in person. And um, also if parents have that need, they would need to sign up. Um, if you give me a moment, I'm going to look at our link for LAUSD so that um, you can look at what's already out there. I think our enrichment classes are not posted yet. Um, but I'm, I'm going to see if I can put, post the link there for you. And I'm almost there. It's called Summer of Learning. And if you click on that link, you would be able to see um, all the options that we have. I'm going to post it on the chat. And then that way families can go directly to the link. So again, we'll have another Tech Talk with more information about summer school with more details. But for now, you can go into that link and again, explore the opportunities that you might have. They are different based on their uh, level, whether it's high school, there's a focus on credit recovery and um, a lot of uh, different programs that we have um, for high schools. And then again, the, the wonderful enrichment programs the district will be offering. Thank you. Uh, ladies, I, I had a, a question. Um, if, if I have an older student, an, an older child who's in, in secondary, um, are the benefits of uh, play still uh, available to them? Or is, is this something that is primarily for uh, the younger kids? Um, no, so there is, the benefits are the same for our older students, which is why we included a primary example and a secondary example. Um, you know, uh, this, the simplest one that I can think of is the coloring books. Um, there are still benefits regardless of the age. Um, you just have to change up the activity so that it is age appropriate. Right. Making it more age appropriate. So the example was like, yeah, you might start your, your um, card games with, you know, old maid and go fish turns into, you know, speed and other games. 
And remember that when you're doing that, one of the big things is to have those, those conversations, right? So that we are giving our students, no matter what age, they find them to be good communicators, good listeners. I okay, think the story so cubes are really important. Oh, I'm sorry. I no, go ahead, story, Diane. The story cubes are really important, and as the student gets older, you can have different themes on different story cubes, and as they roll them, you could do like a comparison and contrast between nice. stories. So, um, definitely endless possibilities. Wonderful. So, I what I'm hearing is like uh, the activity might start out with coloring, but I might be able to branch out the activity and then looking at, at the shades of color and looking at the symmetry uh, of dealing with the picture uh, so that the child can still use and benefit from the activity at their own level. Yes, and you just used some wonderful vocabulary, Alex, and I think that's one of um, the most, uh, the greatest benefit is the vocabulary that you're able to expose your child to is very important. So as opposed to saying, you know, let's look at the color blue. Maybe you give them four options of blue and now they know four different options. Then you go into symmetry. What is symmetry? The mirroring, um, the vocabulary that you use with your child, they will use everywhere they go. And, and then they're able to attach new vocabulary and new meaning as they hear more words um, to connect to, let's say, symmetry. W wonderful. I can tell you our own personal story. My uh, daughter has started um, in the last month, started to uh, become uh, quite the artist and she is, is uh, drawing. I have a, a seven-year-old, uh, um, a girl who is in first grade and she has taken upon uh, herself. We uh, took her to an art class. And from that, that time, she is now uh, drawing and doing her own art, art activities. And she started her portfolio uh, uh, this uh, week. And, but it, it's a first grade portfolio. So it is uh, um, just drawings of things that she likes. And she's actually going on YouTube and uh, looking at different art activities and how to draw things. Um, she was inspired by um, a, a classroom activity that was presented to her um, a, a couple of weeks ago, and she's she's blossomed uh, since then, and, I, and she's uh, enjoying it uh, very much so. And so, when I saw your own uh, coloring activities, it reminded me of what what my daughter is, is has started doing, and the benefits that she uh, has from it. So, uh, thank you very much for sharing that wonderful example. I know there's okay. some, some people that had their hands raised. I wasn't sure if, if you wanted to take questions, but I know two participants have their hands raised. Yes, now would be the time. Uh, so if you have your hand raised, let me see. I see, do you see who they were? Ten, yes, two, two attendees have their hand raised. Okay, so it's a uh, uh, Marcella uh, Sosa. Would you like uh, um, Marcella to put your question or comment in the chat and we'll be able to address it as well as um, it's a, I, I believe it's a phone. It says 09302918 also has their hand raised. And if you would like to put your uh, question in the, in the chat and we'll be able to address it as well. Also, um, they're asking about if it's going to be available for later viewing. I don't know if you wanted to make a statement about how it'll be on YouTube and. Oh, our workshop. Yes, yeah, someone's asking. Yes, uh, um, local district uh, uh, central uh, uh, families. This is a uh, uh, an exclusive, a first for uh, Tech Talks uh, here uh, today. Um, Ms. Arguin, thank you for uh, allowing us to debut it. Uh, like this, uh, our uh, presentation will be available and accessible to uh, uh, families. It is being uh, right now presented live on YouTube. And what the uh, intention is, is to put this on our own channel for you to watch it uh, anytime at, at a later date. So you can uh, also get the benefit of seeing this uh, over and, uh, and over again. 
but also I'd like to remind uh, everyone that the resources that, that you um, are were that were presented in this workshop are available uh, to uh, parents and will be available uh, as well as throughout the summer, uh, correct, uh, um, special ed team? Yes, the resources folder that we shared, um, the presentation is in there as well. If you wanna go back and watch some of the, the how to play speed video, um, those are all live links and they're for you to have. Um, and if you happen to lose the link, please feel free to email um, Alex, our team. We would be more than happy to share the Google folder with you. Um, we made it for you to use uh, as much as possible. Thank you very much. Uh, and I've just put the uh, link again in the chat. So feel free to use the resource link to uh, have access to the information that was provided in today's workshop, as well as the presentation itself. I see, we, uh, let me take a look at the chat. Alex, um, what I did is uh, I put the bit.ly to connect to our YouTube channel for LD Central. They'll be able to see the presentation. And then I just dropped the resource link that Ms. Mullen just mentioned into the YouTube so that they can see it there. So they'll have access. Oh, nice. Very, very nice. Ms. Aragin, do you mind dropping the uh, summer school uh, a link again? We have Okay, a, I sure um, will. I will drop it right now. We have an inquiry about uh, uh, the summer school enrichment classes again. Yes. Give me one moment. I'll be dropping it. I don't know if the, the person is still here. Someone asked about PACE as well. I saw a question. What does PACE do exactly? Oh, so um, PACE, uh, we are your uh, community uh, um, parent and support uh, for your for local district central. And uh, for our, our department, we work to support uh, the different community of schools uh, with the parent resources, parent outreach. Uh, we work in, in tandem with the community representative at your, your school site, at your child's school site, with providing uh, different information, resources, events, in order to inform uh, parents as well as community reps about the different initiatives offered within uh, Los Angeles Unified, and specifically for this uh, local district. Okay, I, I dropped it in um, on the chat for parents to have the information for summer school also. Thank you, Ms. Aragin. So question well, about um, summer break and food distribution. I'm not sure yet what that's gonna look like, but that's a great question uh, for us to respond and be, be able to give you an update at our uh, soon to have a summer session for Tech Talks. Keep joining us. You can also email us and we can get that information to you as quickly as possible. I'll put my email on there for you and we can help you directly. And there's a question in Spanish in regards to summer being uh, available virtually or in person from Yemi. I think there'll be different opportunities. Um, I know for sure the enrichment program will be virtual and it'll all depend on what the schools have to offer. So some have those online classes, but again, we'll have more details at our Tech Talks and more. They can also peruse or review um, the information that's already on the website and there will be more coming uh, because we still don't have all the details of the enrichment programs, which have been very, very popular. Last year, we had many, many, like thousands of students enrolling in really fun activities and wanting them to take, um, um, you know, virtual tours, virtual um, just activities um, that um, students would need. So um, again, we'll have more details for you, but great questions that can help us for our next session. Okay. Well, I'll hand it back off to Mr. Um, Campbell for closing, and thank you everybody for joining us. 
Thank you everyone for joining us. It looks like we are, uh, have come to an end, uh, but before we go, I would like to personally thank the special ed uh, team for joining us today and providing us a, with a wonderful workshop and letting uh, parents know about all the many uh, activities that they can do, uh, especially now that we're approached summer, uh, but to get your, your children off the screens. I know that is something that I, I am working on myself my own children and always trying to motivate them uh, to do different activities. Uh, now that school's back in in a session in, in person, uh, as, as well as on, online, we still are faced with the opportunity of trying to provide different avenues for our, our students uh, to be, um, to have physical activity. So I, I really appreciate it, uh, ladies, for you coming on today and informing our LDC families about the many different activities that they can uh, have their child participate in and right in time for summer. So thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Have a great summer, parents. Thank you for joining us today. Goodbye.